complex about it. Got to give John Stephen Jones more time, as he said, and they have to be able to run the ball some as well. They had moments where they did that in the first half. Meanwhile, Manville has just been lights out in terms of what they've done defensively and the big plays on offense. This kickoff is going to go out of bounds, so Highland Park will get it at the 30-yard line. So the defense for Manville has really fallen on several different guys, Shea Walker. Well, again, we talk about the pressure, but you see the number of sacks there, Craig, and it has just been relentless. Pettiscale has been, has been a kick out of bounds. Yeah, Always spotted on the 30-yard line. First down, and Highland Park. Roberson and DePriest Taylor, all of those guys with two sacks in the first half, and you have that kind of success. And where we saw Highland Park be able to be more efficient was when they would actually get Stephen uh, or Jones to get out of the pocket, not stand back there and just let everything go away and have him scramble around. Get him out on edge, giving an opportunity to locate some of those targets downfield. Scott Stark from the 30. And John Stephen Jones. And how about some misdirection on first down to Paxton Alexander churning up field. It'll work for about six yards before Corey Roberson can make the tackle. Second down and four for Highland Park. So that might be one thing, Shay, just to do some different things. We just saw something a little bit different there, just to try to throw Manville off balance a bit. Well, and it's the defense. I mean, if you see a big, aggressive defense, you've got to find a way to attack them and create some angles and some space for your skilled players. Quick pass this time. First down and a little more to Finn Corwin. And Brian Johnson forced him out of bounds, and that'll go for eight yards and a first down. We did see a little bit of that later in that second quarter, Craig, where John Stephen Jones was able to get the ball out quickly. And so he's not looking downfield, so it's a quick out route, it's a stop route. Something that's happening in front of the defenders. Finn Corn does a nice job of picking up the first down on that pass. On the 43, Alexander was able to slice through a hole. And big running room for the senior running back, Paxton Alexander. Found a little alley and turned it into a 19-yard gain. Well, give a lot of credit over there to Thomas Schellmeyer. Big left tackle, cleared it out. Paxton Alexander took advantage of the crease and very, very good start to this drive. Did you see how he slipped right as that hole was closing? Was just getting in right before the door slammed shut. Quickness there on display. And once more, this time it's going to be downfield looking for and unable to connect with Corwin on the pass from Connor Allen. That's the grandson of head coach Randy Allen on that option pass, trying some trickery there. And Randy's grandson unable to complete that pass going downfield. Uh, I really like the aggressive play calling right now coming out by the Scots. Finn Corwin not able to get underneath that pass. Would have been a big play. Second down and 10. This time it'll be Jones to throw. And almost picked off. I think it took Jermaine Brown by surprise. It was right there in his hands. Incomplete and it brings up third down and he knows he missed a golden opportunity there. Well, we've seen him, Jermaine Brown, putting pressure on the quarterback coming from the sides and that time he drops back into coverage and I don't think John Stephen Jones is expecting him to be there because he's been in the backfield all first half as he drops back into the throwing lane. Now it's third and ten for the Scots. Yeah, and a little bump there right on the tail end of the play. I don't think Jermaine Brown expected the football to be there. Now third down and ten, but a flag goes down. And it'll be a false start. False start, Holland Park number 88, five yard penalty. Remains third down. Yeah, it's on Cade Sawstead because I think the play was going to go to Cade Sawstead. Looked like he may get just, and it, it is just, just an eyelash off. Take a look at the top of your screen there. And Might have wiggled a little before because we saw the uh, flag being tossed as he went back stationary again. So after an excellent start to this drive, Scott's now at backpedal and it's third down and 15. Go, 
Jones going deep, looking for Sawstead. The catch, Kate Sawstead comes down with a football at the 10 yard line, 33 yards on third down and 15. Talk about making up for a false start. Well, he did such a great job of getting off the ball. Trent Gordon is not in bad position, but Sawstead is so big, so agile, and fast as he gets down the sideline. He did a great job of towing the sideline after he got off of press coverage, and that beautiful ball by John Stephen Jones right over the top of the defender. First and goal for Highland Park. Option toss, outside, Alexander, touchdown! Third and 15 for 33 yards. One play later, Paxton Alexander touchdown. Opening drive of the third quarter, critical, and Highland Park scores. Well, and a very nice job here by Paxton Alexander. All the defenders were outside thinking he was going to continue to go wide. He had a crease the second time that we saw him on this drive, first with the run, but now on that pitch and the option. Great job of getting it in his own, using your eyes, take the vision down the middle. Cut it right back across. Outstanding. Highland Park uses a timeout here. It'll be interesting to see if Randy Allen wants to go for two to make it a three-point ball game as you look at Paxton Alexander taking it in. We go back to what Randy was telling C.T. Steckle at the half when he said, we've got to give John Steven, as he said, more time. And he said, we've got to run the football. And we just saw Alexander do that. He had a 19-yard run earlier on the drive. So two big runs. For the touchdown, and it's an impressive scoring drive for Highland Park well, in 90 seconds to move it 70 yards in seven plays. And if you're Randy Allen and the Highland Park staff, you could not ask for a better start to the second half. Now let's see what the Scots want to do. It looks like Highland Park. Let's see if they go for two, or and that's what they're going to do. Mateo Cordray was standing there with the T in the hand, but he's coming back to the sidelines. So Highland Park did use a timeout, and they will go for two to try to make this a three-point deficit. See what's dialed up here for the Scots. Oh, interestingly, they have the ball spotted right in the middle of the field. Option again. Late toss. This time, it's in. Connor Allen, grandson of the head coach. Two-point conversion. Scots within three. Nice job in patience there by John Stephen Jones. When you run the option, you've got to get it all the way to the defender. You don't want to kick it out too soon. He took it all the way down. Right where Trent Serrato was waiting for him. Executes the pitch. Connor Allen does the rest. Highland Park right back in this football game. The field goal before the half important. Now a touchdown and a two-point conversion, and it's a 21-18 ball game. Well, how about the big play? Getting that pass, that 33-yard pass on third and 15. Sawstead. I mean, what, what a weapon. He came into the game with 75 catches, over 1,300 yards, 19 scores. He is just a big-time, game-changing type player. Let's go down to the Highland Park sideline to C.T. Steckle. Well, guys, like many of us, Connor Allen remembers the first time he cried at the end of a football game, the day his grandfather's team lost a state title game, but 10 years later, he's hoping to erase that memory. This past summer, Randy Allen's son, Zach, who played quarterback for his dad at Abilene Cooper during the early 1990s, moved his family to Dallas. And that meant Connor could suit up as a Scott and play for his grandfather, the man they affectionately called coach. No surprise there. Connor wasn't guaranteed a thing, though, when he showed up. In fact, he had to diversify his skill set and prove he was worthy of the playing time. And he performed the tune of over five yards to carry the season and 12 scores. Tonight, guys, the entire Allen family making memories that will last a lifetime. Well, you said it, CT, and yeah, my grandson did it. And this is the game that CT was talking about that uh, Connor Allen first shed tears about 10 years ago. Garrett Gilbert and Lake Travis. Gilbert to Cole Walla. Downfield for the touchdown. Cavs were up nine in the fourth quarter. Down too late in the game. Highland Park trying to convert a fourth down. Pass dropped. They're at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, and Lake Travis held off for the first. 
of its drive for five, the five consecutive state championships. And that was in 2007 when Lake Travis, coached by Jeff Dykus at the time. Then, after that, more success for uh, the Cavaliers in that drive for five afterwards. And of course, current head coach Hank Carter was the coach on the end of the drive for five. After Chad Morris, who's now the new head football coach at Arkansas, coached Lake Travis to a couple of back-to-back -back state championships. Left first for Tulsa, then for Clemson as an offensive coordinator, then at SMU, and now the head coach at Arkansas, and then Hank Carter taking over from there. And he'll be on the sidelines for Lake Travis tomorrow. Well, Coach Carter, as Lake Travis goes in the 6A Division II state title round. But back then, there were 4A schools that beat Highland Park and Randy Allen, two years removed from the Scots' fourth state championship overall, which was Allen's first with the team. And the most impressive thing to me, Craig, about the drive for five, he was done with three coaches. I mean, it just, it just, that defies almost everything that you would think of, of a team being able to pull that off with three different head coaches. Excellent point. Cam Scott back out there on the field, and Scott on the kickoff return, 22 yard return there. So Scott, who was banged up, as reported by Sarah Merrifield in the first half with that hamstring, back out there and returned the kick. And the ball's at the 22-yard line, and that's where Manville will have the football for the first time in the second half. Highland Park right back in this football game. And now how do the Mavericks respond? And for that matter, how does the Highland Park defense respond? It'll be interesting to see with the Scott defense changes that they've made, adjustments that they've made at the halftime. Takes it Martin to the air and caught by Scott and wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage, maybe just beyond it. As he does move it out to the 25, so it's a gain of three yards. Nope, bubble screen, but that Highland Park defense doing a nice job of closing down, coming in and making sure that he's got nowhere to go. Managed to fall forward for a pickup of three yards. And on second down over the middle, that pass incomplete behind uh, Warren Laster, the intended target. Manville had it been asked a few times, where's Manville? Because the program hadn't been around that long, down in Brazoria County, south of Houston. And uh, yeah, they're state track champions. And, 2015. Of course, they played in the state football championship, lost to Alito back in 2011. So it's their second appearance in the title round. Third down. Martin under some pressure now. The Scots unable to stop it. And Casey Martin tucks it in and picks up nine yards at a first down. Well, what a gutsy run. He's got negative yards rushing on the season, as you might expect from a quarterback. Probably getting sacked, but does a great job of picking up a first down right there. They go quick tempo now with a handoff to Garrison Johnson. Pushes forward for a pickup of about three yards. Meanwhile, there's some tumbling going on way downfield yeah. between a Scott and a Maverick, and it's quickly broken up. Jalen Preston was involved in it for Manville. Yeah, him and Grace Serio got all tangled up, and they went on well after the play, and they were 35, 40 yards from the play. Second down. Martin, the double move downfield, looking for Scott, can't pull it in. It's wide of the mark, out of bounds, and it brings up third down. The third down coming up is Cam Scott. Senior, been in and out of the lineup. With, uh, the sore hamstring, but back out there for Kirk Martin's ball club. Third down and seven. Martin will dump it around the corner. Is the Aaron Prince up field and a first down? Oh, what a great block by Jalen Preston coming back. He allowed the receiver to pick up the first down. There is a Scott down. All the way across like the James field. James Herring. 
the uh, senior safety. Yeah, he took a wicked shot. Jalen Preston's a big guy, 6'3", 212 pounds. You'll see it right there. And Herring just doing everything he can, selling out, trying to bring Daenerys Prince down before he gets out of bounds. And I think the combination of that and the hit on the block by Jalen Preston. And hitting the turf, too, as you'll see here. That hit and then that hit down. So the attention there being paid to James Herring. So the training attention being paid now to Highland Park senior strong safety, James Herring, here in the third quarter of the 5A Division I state championship. Pride. You can't help but feel it when you see their hard work pay off. At Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, it's a pride we share as parents, neighbors, and Texans. That's why we're proud to be an official sponsor of the University Interscholastic League. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance Companies, protecting Texans since 1952. Texas, the prices are falling on chicken strip country baskets down at DQ. Right now, for just $4.99, you get four tender fried chicken strips, crispy golden fries, fresh hot Texas toast, and our creamy country gravy. Hey, at just $4.99, this deal is a slam dunk, only for a limited time at DQ. And this year, give them something they'll really flip over, a DQ gift card. Now that's what I love about Texas. You see the attention being paid to James Herring. He says he's all right, but and he hopped up pretty quickly after he was down. I'll tell you, he's had a great game so far. We've seen him be in perfect position on two deep balls, defending and making sure that the Mammal receivers were not able to go up and get it. And it was a great hustle play, trying to force Prince out of bounds. He just kind of got caught up between two forces, and glad to see that he looks like he's all right. Prince on the carry again. This time it's a shorter gain, a pickup of about three. And Noble Nash, senior linebacker on the stop. So it is second down and seven. And now Martin, the double move, and the pass is too far in front or it would have been a walk into the end zone for Warren Laster because Grayson Syria just slipped and stumbled trying to get out on coverage. Right. He ran to the inside, then back out. But I'll tell you what, Elliot Newsom, the nose guard, got down into the area where Kaysen Martin was trying to step into the throw. And I think it made him put the ball out there too far. It's great hustle on the interior defensive line and helped disrupt that pass play. Third down. Third, third down situation on this drive for Mandel. And Martin deep over the middle. And the catch made in front of Colby Washington, and he hauls it in down inside the 20-yard line. Well, the only guy who could catch that pass would be Colby Washington. Kaysen Martin throws it to the inside, kind of leads the receiver out there. See, he's got a little bit of space. Washington goes down and makes a great catch. Right back to the ground with a blocker in front, inside the 10. Ladarius Owens will have another first down. Well, on the right side of that line with Layden Robinson and Jalen Mamorell creating and, space. And how about Mamble converting three third downs on this drive? Second and goal from the eighth. This time bouncing outside for a yard. Nothing more than that for Denaire Prince. James Herring who is back on the field. C.T. Steckel with more on James Herring. Well, Craig, he came over to the sidelines. They sat him down on the bench and went through a full concussion protocol. He passed the test, looked at the trainer, and said, I'm ready to get back in the game. He's now on the field. And it came up with a stop there. So the play coming up on second down and goal. Bro 
going for the end zone. And oh, what a catch made by Jalen Preston. Hauls it in with one arm in for the score. Coverage is not bad by Zach Foltz. Just an outstanding play by Jalen Preston. Puts the right paw up, hauls the ball in, and, and I like the way where that ball was thrown, Craig. Casey Martin put the ball out to the outside. Foltz was to the inside on the big body. He's had 6'3", 212-pound frame. Reaches out with the right hand, comes up with the circus catch for the score. Indeed. And Casey Martin talking with Dad. Touchdown pass. And it's a 28-18 lead from Anvil. Now let's send it to John Radigan with a message from our friends at Baylor Scott and White, who proudly support Texas high school football. I'm here with Jim Hinton, CEO of Baylor Scott and White Health. Jim, why is Baylor so tied to the UIL? Well, you know, sports are so important in our society, and we want to be part of making sports safer. Yeah, obviously, everybody would like to prevent injuries, but aren't injuries in sports just inevitable? Of course, there are risks in any kind of sports that you involve yourself in, but we think that there are techniques that can reduce the incidence of injuries and help get our sons and daughters back playing their sports even more quickly. Baylor Scott & White Health has a unique relationship with the star in Frisco. Can this serve as a blueprint for how sports medicine is evolving? Well, we think so. Uh, this partnership with the Cowboys is one of the most unique in the country. It's us, it's the Dallas Cowboys, and it's the Frisco ISD. What a great team to put together to really make a difference in sports. Well, we're glad to have you here and glad to have you part of our championship weekend. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. How about that scoring drive for Manville? Converting four third downs on the march, ending with the circus catch. Off the pass from Case and Mark to Jalen Preston. Again, using the body, great way to do it. And uh, the pass again, play. Case and Martin, Craig, was, was on the right trajectory, the right type of pace on the ball where he could actually go up and make a play. Comes up with a great catch. Jalen Preston, we mentioned earlier, he's bound for Texas A&M. Case and Martin, the young man who threw it, is bound for the University of North Texas. He'll be just up the road in Denton next year. Ten-point lead for Man. Kick off to Connor Allen. Allen outside, and an excellent return for Allen. So Highland Park will have good field position. They'll start from their own 41-yard line after return by Allen. Nice job of feeling it. And you talk about, you know, hey, well, this is the coach's grandson. Yeah, he's going to get the play. Of course he is. No. Connor Allen's a player. 12 rushing TDs on the season, five receiving TDs coming into today's game. Made a big impact right there, giving his offense good starting field position. Alexander in the backfield. Not Stephen Jones will hand it to him. Paxton Alexander, nice first down carry. As he'll pick up eight yards out to the 49-yard line. Now Highland Park going with some quick tempo. And this bounces off the turf, throw back, still eligible for a forward pass, but it'll be downfield and tight roping his way with John Stephen Jones from Scully Tenevine who went downfield. And it's a first down. <laughs> How about the moxie on the bounce pass? I have not seen that in an awfully long time. You know why? Because we don't have the old rugs anymore, the old artificial turf rugs that are quite firm that have the nap. No, that was fantastic. Great execution. John Jermaine Stephen. Brown was there to help force John Stephen Jones out, but not before he picked up the first down. We're seeing Randy Allen empty the bag tonight. Leave nothing to chance in a state championship game. Jones this time trying to throw on the run under pressure and has to get rid of it. Does so, and there'll be a 15-yard penalty. Hit late by Trent Serrato. Serrato pleading his case with the referee Wayne Elliott. 
Personal foul, roughing the quarterback, Manville number 29, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. I like what we just saw there. Trent Serrano went over and yeah. patted John Stephen Jones on the end. Yeah, Sorry it, about that. It, he, look, it, it's not a malicious hit, wicked hit. It's just a hustle play for linebackers. And great job of sportsmanship by both of those players. And Hyla Park will be more than happy to accept the 15-yard walk-off. That will take it down. To the man bull, 32. Jones setting it up. To Alexander screen with blockers in front, hurdling a tackler. Paxton Alexander. What a play! 26 yards, including a leap. First and goal, Highland Park. Second time in this game, Craig, that we've seen John Stephen Jones be patient on these little misdirections. He was on the first scre or screen in the first half, and how about the job that he did right there? He moved all the defense over to the right side, and he just lost a little beach ball over the top. Paxton Alexander takes it, hurdles Trent Gordon, stays inbounds, picking up positive yards. Outstanding play. From the Manville six. Jones running that option. It's worked tonight, but in trouble this time. Still on his feet, but he's going to lose yards. And coming over to Priest Taylor. And also to Corey Tolds. It's a loss of five. Boy, lateral quickness. So much there for Mandel. That's what you call pursuit to the ball, and that's exactly how this... Defense works, and you see Sauce, Sauce there, there thinking he's got room, he's got the body on it, but John Stephen Jones did not have an opportunity to look downfield. He was running for his life. He's going to bring up second down and goal. Back at the 12-yard line now. Jones, outside, ball caught, and inside the five. Is Genevine on the catch. Worked for eight yards. Craig, that looked like a simple play. But that pass play it was kind of like a three-quarter throw by John Stephen Jones. And, and he really he put it to the inside because he needed a directional throw. He got it right over the top of the defender and perfectly where Genevine could come up with the catch. That was an outstanding throw. It's not going to show big on the stat sheet. Big play. It brings up third and goal for Highland Park at the man from four-yard line. Jones looking, still looking. Now, touchdown to Jay Smith. Open over the middle. Here come the Scots. Rolling out of the pocket immediately and not having to wait to make some magic happen when the pocket collapses. John Seaman Jones does a great job. It's very dangerous to throw back in the middle of the field. But when you have a wide receiver that open in the presence of mind for him to be able to plant the foot and stop and just flick it right across the way, outstanding. JSJ, as many know him. John Stephen Jones on the touchdown to Jay Smith. Point after, which pulls Hyla Park again to within three because of the two point conversion successfully executed on the earlier touchdown. So it's 28-25. Highland Park back within three. Another look at the score. Well, defensive coordinator Kevin Hall was likening his playing ability to Baker Mayfield. And not just the pitching catch right there after scrambling out, but take another look at the little celebration. Right there, the sky can view right there in the middle of the end zone. So Iowa Park uh, back again within three. But making plays, and that's exactly what he has done all season long. And we talk about this Highland Park team. Offensively, nobody has stopped them all season from scoring points. High scoring, high octane offense. John Stephen Jones is the, the captain of the ship. <laughs> Kickoff to come for Mateo Cordre. Good kick. 
and unreturnable. Touchback. Let's go over to the Manville sideline and Sarah Merrifield. Thanks, guys. You know, I talked about Hoka Hay earlier. Well, part of the creation of that culture we talked about was because Coach Martin is, has founded Manville Athletics. The school opened in the early 2000s, and their first varsity team didn't play until 2008. So when I asked him about what the challenges are about founding the program, he says you have to create every little detail. There's no normal. But he has truly gained the respect of everyone here and at Manville because the Mavericks have made the playoffs each year the last 10 seasons, and they're back to state for the second time. You guys mentioned that a little bit earlier, looking for their first state title. Guys? All right, thanks very much, Sarah. Well, this Manville team is well known throughout the state. They signed 13 offers last off of last year's team, and they seemingly are just rotating through another bevy of Division I talent. On first down, the ground surging through, and a nice first down carry. Garrison Johnson picks up 11 in a first down. Shea, you mentioned it. Oh, it's after the look at the run by Garrison. Straight up the middle for 11 yards. We'll bring up first down and 10. Swing it out to Jalen Preston in space. And they'll be wrapped up of flags coming in as well. Hold on and we'll check and see what the flag is. It would be a gain of seven yards if the play stands. Personal foul, face mask, Manville number five. 15-yard penalty, replay first down. Doesn't happen often, but you do see it sometimes. Extending the stiff arm, Shea, yep. sometimes can grab some face mask, and there it is. That was a great job by Zach Foltz coming down to square up with Preston. And the 6'3 guy is going down and about the 5'9 guy gets a hand on the face mask. Good call by the officials. Run it back to the 21-yard line. And it makes it first and 25. Back to the ground to Johnson. Pointed out, Shay, Mamble has plenty of outstanding talent. Several of those electing to move forward. We've pretty much outlined just about all these guys where they're headed for their collegiate careers. Well, and this is not a unique thing for the Mamble Mavericks. I mean, it's seemingly they turn these types of guys out every year and give Kirk Martin a lot of credit for developing these guys and creating an opportunity for them to play. Second down. And 20, and Martin going deep down the field and incomplete. Flag is going to come in. This will be against Highland Park. Cam Scott, the intended target. Grayson Serio had the coverage, but perhaps too much coverage. And Martin slow to get up the other way. Yeah, Cam Scott coming in on a post pattern. He's going to get the call. Pass interference, Highland Park, number 23. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. So it'll simply be a reset of the chains. Walk the 15 yards back the opposite way, which had happened earlier. Plus, of course, they picked up five on the run as well. So as a result of that, it'll be a first down. And then Martin going down. Yeah, Prince Dorb with the sophomore defensive end. Yeah, Casey Martin, slow to get up. See if he shakes that off. Going back to work and back to the ground it goes. Trying to hurdle through tacklers is Ladarius Owens. Gain of five. Cole Bonner on the tackle. The right side of the offensive line, Craig. Jalen Mamarell, number 74, right tackle. He's doing yeoman light work, creating running lanes. Not a lot of room in there, but he's making the crease. Second down, five for the Mavericks. Martin behind the intended target, Preston, incomplete. And Casey Martin walking down towards his wide receiver saying, hey, you got to stop. I'm throwing it. I'm throwing it to a spot. You've got to be on that spot, not moving through. And wide receiver, quarterback, not on the same page on that play. So it's third down and five. And we'll four out of eight. Remember, they four out of eight in the second half. They converted four third downs on that touchdown drive the last time. Well, third down. Over the middle. It is caught in a first down. 
Terrence Norman, excellent job of holding on to the football, a gain of 14. Well, Kaysen Martin is so confident in his arm strength that he knows he can get the ball to a spot. We see it throwing kind of, I'm going to call it low and inside, but that's where the receiver wants it because he knows that the defender's on his back. Terrence Norman comes up with a huge catch and another third down conversion by Manley. It's been really the trademark here in this third quarter. A handoff, circling through as Owens, lost the football, picked up. And Marshall Ballard has the recovery and return for Highland Park. A 19-yard return. And the game takes another turn. A great backside pursuit on this play by number 47, Colby Hopkins. Starts out on the defense's right side, closing down. And I'm not sure if he made the tackle, but you see right there, great hustle. And then the hat on, James Herring coming back into the game after that injury. Coming up with a huge play for Highland Park. Elliott Newsom also got in on that, but Herring dislodging the ball. And now Highland Park will start at midfield, down three. So the big return by Ballard. The Scots are set up well. Movement, however, will cost Highland Park. Five yards, I believe. Ball start, Highland Park, number 88. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Sawstad again. So does that mean he's going to come back and catch another pass for 33 yards? Uh, <laughs> Did that I'm, the last I'm time. I'm pretty sure offensive coordinator Grayson Wells would prefer that not to have happen. Goes back to first down at 15. Yeah, when you have the momentum, it was just tough to put yourself at first and 15. See what John Stephen Jones can dial up for this Scott's offense. Jones already over 300 yards passing here late in the third quarter. And that pass knocked to the turf by DePriest Taylor. He's trying to set up the screen over the middle. And Taylor knocked that right down to the field incomplete. That's senior linebacker doing a great job just mirroring John Stephen Jones. He jumps up, swats it away with the right hand. Man, Chris Taylor, he's had a, some, some kind of a game, hasn't he? Kevin Hall, defensive coordinator, loves it, loves the energy and the motor he plays with. This Bamble defense putting up a furious fight. Second down and 15. Let's look for Mandel. They drop off now, but Jones under a four-man rush being pressured and has to get rid of the football. Incomplete. Driven and down to the turf. Coy Roberson in hot pursuit. Junior defensive end. But John Stephen Jones looking downfield. He really, the receivers, take another look here at number 93. Chasing down the quarterback. Looking, looking, looking. Then he just has to get rid of the football, but the coverage downfield is outstanding. Isla Park is 7 out of 12 on third down tonight. And this is third and 15. They converted the last third and 15 on the 33-yard pass to Sawstead, which led to the last Highland Park touchdown. Jones now looking towards Sawstead, but here comes the pressure again. Now a flag goes down, and Jones hit as he throws. It's incomplete. He was really hey, hit up hard that? from behind. It? That's Derek Williams hitting him from behind. Mamble's going to decline a holding penalty here. Holding. Holland Park number 71. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Another look at it as Schellmeyer was called for the hold, but it was declined anyway because of the pressure on Jones and the pass incomplete. Very difficult to hold your block that long, especially when you've got these aggressive guys coming in and rushing. Derek Williams was the one who got hold, but he's also the guy who spun back around. And Pat then the snap was dropped. The punt goes sky high, but very shallow, and then rolls backwards. Somebody from Island Park has to 
down it in day two. Well, that punt travels a grand total of seven yards because it was very nearly blocked. And think about the opportunity here for Highland Park and what the Mamble defense did. After that fumbled ball with Highland Park recovered, they had the ball right around the midfield stripe. A lot of momentum going in. The series kind of fell apart. Now on the punt, punter drops the ball, doesn't get it away cleanly, and not too much of a change of field position. Give that Mamble fabric defense a lot of credit. You're right. Very close to where they were when they had the turnover. All that's happened is time tick off the clock here late in the third quarter. Maverick start from their own 48. And Martin, some time. Deep down, field wide open. The catch, the touchdown to Cam Scott. Leg looks okay there. There is a flag down, however. And this is coming back, I think. Holding Manville number 70. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. That one on the left tackle, Stephen Shaw. Well, Casey and Martin, and I'm not quite sure how Cam Scott got as open as he did. But just gliding down the sideline and hold the call right there at the back of the play. And Prince Dorba, the defensive end, the sophomore, putting the pressure on. So back inside the 40-yard line. Now on first and 20 from the 38 for the Mavericks. Martin throwing on the run downfield and almost caught. Scott almost had it anyway and almost and had a touchdown. That pass not quite right in stride, but Ken well, Scott probably feels like he should have had it. Martin rolling out to his right, puts as much as he can on the ball, just a little bit soft coming in. Scott not able to haul it in, running full speed. So second down and 20 from the 38. Scott off the field after after running two deep. Patterns downfield, getting a breather. Martin faking it to Preston, and then throws downfield again. Put on the run. Inside is Colby Washington. Washington in for the score, 62 yards. Wow, with these deep threats by the Mamble Mavericks, skill position, wide receivers. You see the fake there to Jalen Preston, the pump fake. And that's all that Colby Washington needed to get behind the defender. Great balance, staying in bounds, coming in for the touchdown. Well, there were two close calls. One that was called back, then an incompletion. But Highland Park still unable to make the play defensively on the deep ball. This time, it's Washington. And a perfectly thrown pass. Case and Martin dropped it right in the bucket. Colby Washington, senior wide receiver. Doesn't have a lot of catches on the season, but he'll certainly take that one every day. His third touchdown of the season. And Mandel back up 10 at 35-25. Jason Martin is having himself a night as well. How about that? Four passes over 60 yards, four touchdowns tonight. Still a minute to go in the third quarter. So now we'll see what Highland Park can do. Down 10 points. Highland Park has trailed by as many as 14. Couple of occasions. They were down 11 at the half, pulled within three, then went down 10, pulled within three again, and now down by 10 again. And you said this correctly. There's still a minute and four seconds left in the third quarter. All the fireworks are happening here. Ways to go from the nine. Oh, oh my. 
big pop that was. Finn Corwin is all right. He's at the 19-yard line. Adrian Hardy, senior running back on special teams. Running back wearing number 88, but listen to this. It's a big hit right yeah. there. Highland Park will have the football. Case and Martin comes off that big touchdown pass, and with more on him and the Martin family, here's Sarah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Case Martin, excuse me, Coach Martin is a huge family man, and Kaysen is his son, the quarterback here on Manville. But he has three boys and a girl. The girl is the volleyball player, and arguably, Coach Martin says that she wants the state championship more than anyone else in the family. But for Coach and Kaysen, it's great to see how alike they are. And you can really see that on the sidelines when they're talking back and forth and talking football. But he is truly a coach's son, and even they even give the same, same pregame speeches without even knowing it. But they're really enjoying this game together right now, guys. All right. Thanks very much, Sarah. Definitely going to enjoy it when you have the lead as they've had it. They've led throughout, although Highland Park's continue to strike back, pick up three yards there, and on second down and seven. Jones will be sacked. DePriest Taylor got him at sack number eight for Manville tonight. Well, DePriest Taylor did not come at the snap. He waited, he paused just for a second. He saw the big opening in the middle of the line of scrimmage and a couple guys pulling out straight line to John Stephen Jones and brings him down for another sack. That'll be the end of the third quarter of the UIL 5A Division I State Football Championship. Mandel, 12 minutes away from its first state title. Highland Park will try to overcome a 10-point deficit to make it back-to-back -back state championships here on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas, the prices are falling on chicken strip country baskets down at DQ. Right now, for just $4.99, you get four tender fried chicken strips, crispy golden fries, fresh hot Texas toast, and our creamy country gravy. Hey, at just $4.99, this deal is a slam dunk, only for a limited time at DQ. And this year, give them something they'll really flip over, a DQ gift card. Now that's what I love about Texas. The Ford year-end sales event is in full swing. Hey, Santa Claus is coming. Tis the season. No, that's him in my blind spot. <laughs> he is rocking that scooter. With a sidecar. Doesn't need reindeer, baby. Making the holidays happen. That's Ford, America's best-selling brand. Current owners now get 0% APR for 72 months, plus 2,000 cash back on a 2017 F-150. At your best in Texas Ford dealer. As children, we learn sports and games are just fun. It's a chance to be wild, to join a team, to run. As great sports live on, nothing makes us feel more alive than cheering as one. In Texas, we got sports everywhere. So turn the game on and join the fun. in the books of the UIL 5A Division I State Football Championship. It is Manville leading Highland Park 35-25. Greg Way and Jay Walker along with Sarah Merrifield. And here's our Texas Farm Bureau Insurance Game Summary. You see the numbers there. Manville with that big edge there and the other member of our broadcast team, C.T. Steckle down on the Highland Park sideline. Well guys, his teammates love him. They're inspired by him and has nothing to do with the family that he comes from. John Stephen Jones won the Landry Award this year, honored as the best high school football player in North Texas. He's got offers from Arkansas, Texas Tech, but he's earning this on his own. When labeled the grandson of, or the son of, he can accept his fortunate position, but when labeled the young man given everything in life, he's quick to respond. And guys, he loves the game. You can just see it in the way he plays. And I can tell you, this sideline right now believes he can will them to this victory. Well, he can help him himself and his team if he can convert a third and 15 here. 
Back at the Highland Park 14-yard line to start the fourth quarter. And going to go deep. Dale Field, he's got Alexander. Paxton Alexander. One man to beat. Alexander inside the 10. Finally tracked down by Sakori Tolles. But not until Paxton Alexander made a huge catch. Great run. And how about the pass by John Stephen Jones? Rolls out to his left. Stops right there behind the left tackle. Drops it in over the top of the defenders. Alexander does the rest. 79 yards on that pass. And from third and 15 from the Highland Park 14, it's first and goal at the Manville 6. CT just said they believe. This time, trying to sweep outside to the goal line. Touchdown, Highland Park. In for the score, junior running back, Benner Page. Well, Paxton Alexander is early getting a break. Benner Page coming in, running off the left side. And the decision and when to make the cut up the field. Outstanding job blocking by Scully Genevine. Now, what a drive. And, and, and how about Highland Park, Craig? These conversions that they're making on third down. The Solstead catch, or Solstead catch, excuse me, on third and 15, a 33 yard grab. And Paxton Alexander coming up huge, changing the field position. Got it down in the scoring zone, and the Scots punch it in. What a ball game. And we still have nearly all of the final quarter to play, and it's 35 32. Right now, let's check in with John Radigan with a message from our friends at Main Event, proudly support Texas high school football. Hi there, we're here with Corey Will. He's the director of marketing for Main Event Entertainment. And Corey, we're thrilled to have you as part of our UIL championship coverage. Why the UIL? Well, it's, uh, it's great for us. Uh, first of all, we're all about young families with kids. And what's exciting for us is those kids grow up and become young adults playing football, involved in high school, cheerleading, and it's just a natural opportunity for us to stay involved with those families uh, at a longer term. Yeah, you build relationships with them, like the one that we've built with you and with the UIL and with Fox Sports Southwest. It's a pretty good partnership, isn't it? It's a great partnership. In fact, you know, we want to, we love supporting the UIL, and we really appreciate the support we get and um, uh, the families we reach uh, through Fox Sports Southwest. Well, we're awfully glad to have you here this weekend and your support all season long as well. This is fun for John Stephen Jones in Highland Park. They come right back, still trailing. Manville has the lead 35-32, but what a ball game. John Stephen Jones, the quarterback of one of the most historic programs in Texas high school football history. Starts from total wins in UIL history. The one at the top of the list is Highland Park. More wins than any high school in the state. Amarillo, second, then Plano. Island Park and Plano had a great rivalry in the 70s and 80s when they were both in the same classification. Temple, these are all historic programs. Win number 749 for March was on Wednesday night in capturing the 2A Division I state championship over Mercurio. So a lot of history, a lot of pedigree there. And Island Park's trying to get win number 816, which of course would mean back-to-back -back state championships. off from Cordray and who's going to bring it out it'll be Preston hesitation now comes up flag goes down Preston still on his feet and he'll be wrestled down around the 16 yard line illegal block in the back Manville number 16 going to be half the distance first down Manville a lot of this unraveled early only I got it, you taken, and you're going to see Warren Laster right here with that block in the back. Have a nice job by the special teams coming down, staying in the lanes and not allowing Jalen Preston, as you said, kind of fell apart at the beginning, trying to field it, trying to decide him or Cam Scott going to take it, and now the Mavericks are going to start scrimmage inside their own five-yard line.
Well, it's going to be interesting to see here. This this should be a lot of fun right here. See what Mambo can do from deep in its own end of the field. They've been able to hit Highland Park with deep shot after deep shot. And Martin may be looking for another one. There it is. Preston with only Herring to beat, and he will beat him. 95 yards, the longest pass play in 5A state championship history. I think, the, I think the Highland Park defense was staying with the outside receiver. Jalen Preston lined up in the slot. Brings it back right to the inside. And he's gone. The quick strike. Version is good. Back to a 10-point Manville advantage. I mean, it, it, this is the kind of shootout thing that we talked about. These two teams, both of them throwing haymakers at each other. Converting on third and long, putting big plays down, having one play scoring. I think that's the third one play scoring drive for the Mavericks in this game. And, and, and it's not that they're doing it from the midfield area. I mean, it's coming from all the way back, deep down in your own side. Man, that was just beautiful pitch and catch. And, Jalen Preston taking it to the house. I think we just got through saying they've been able to get deep shot after deep shot against Highland Park. They got another one. And great yeah. route running, great speed on the part of those Danville receivers and taking advantage. Cam Scott was the outside receiver. Jalen Preston was on the inside. And it just looked like the coverage was kind of just tending or leaning towards Scott. Preston took advantage of it. And give Casey Martin a lot of credit because he put the ball right on the money. And still, almost 11 minutes of football left. On the eight yard line, Corwin. Hard hitting it up to the 19 yard line and that's where Highland Park will start. Well this season, our Fox Sports Southwest High School crew has highlighted the most incredible plays from around the state each and every week. Now it's time to unveil the main event play of the year. We invite you to tune in Saturday evening between our two 6A state championship matchups to see which play is selected as the inaugural main event play of the year. Certainly an opportunity earlier, Jalen Preston's one-handed grab could have been a late addition to it. I we still got time. Yeah. <laughs> Just under the bell, but you'll get it in. Alexander trying to turn the corner and does. Nice first down carry. Picking up what looks to be about seven yards near the uh, 25. Well, they'll call it the 25, not the 26. So bring up second down after that six-yard carry. Still plenty of time left in this. The way Highland Park's been able to move the football, but they will also have to figure out how to get stops on defense. First things first, down 10, and now up the middle. This is Connor Allen. And a first down for the Scots, brought down by Brian Johnson. Johnson, another one of those seniors headed for Texas A&M. Yeah, I kind of would have liked the way that he was running wide. He puts the right foot down, plants it, takes it upfield. He knows he's going to take a shot coming across, but he's enough to pick up the first down. From the 35. Again to Connor Allen. Trying to turn the corner. Oh, was he hit hard by Brian Johnson, who had just made the tackle earlier. The market has a loss of two, or maybe just a loss of one from where the officials now spot the football. But look at this. Man. Greg, I got to tell you, with that single digit number, and I know it's not the right number, but when Jerry Grave. University of Texas back in the early 80s used to close down on the run game. That was very reminiscent of how he would come down and just take the perfect angle from his safety position. Second down and 11. Pass and a nice grab made out of the 40 to the 41 yard line. Grab, grab made by Scully Genevine. Genevine having seven. a great game. Oh, he's and he's down. down. He's made some big catches. 
down right by the Highland Park sideline, brought down by Pedestalo. We'll take another look at it as Scully Genovine, the senior. Nice grab. Hard to see anything in specific there. Yeah, great job of using his hands going out. You can see where Pettisclo was coming over top, trying to rake it down. But Genevine is just, I'm impressed. Inside receiver, doesn't get a lot of attention when you have Sawstad and Finn Corwin, but doing a nice job of coming up with some big catches. we got a timeout, exactly nine minutes remaining in the 5A Division I state championship. The Ford year end sales event is in full swing. Hey, Santa Claus is coming. Tis the season. No, that's him in my blind spot. <laughs> he is rocking that scooter. With a sidecar. Doesn't need reindeer, baby. Making the holidays happen. That's Ford, America's best-selling brand. Current owners now get 0% APR for 72 months, plus 2,000 cash back on a 2017 F-150. At your best in Texas Ford dealer. Hey, Texas, the prices are falling on chicken strip country baskets down at DQ. Right now, for just $4.99, you get four tender fried chicken strips, crispy golden fries, fresh hot Texas toast, and our creamy country gravy. Hey, at just $4.99, this deal is a slam dunk, only for a limited time at DQ. And this year, give them something they'll really flip over, a DQ gift card. Now that's what I love about Texas. Over on the sideline, Scully Genovine receiving some treatment there. Looks like they're looking at the left ankle. After he made the grab and was taken down to the turf. It's third down and four for Highland Park. The ball at the Scots 41 yard line. Alexander the running back. John Stephen Jones will keep it himself. Upfield. And then slid down. Pettisclo came over. It's a move of the chains. That feet went down. He slid down. It's almost like he went down and the legs came back in like a slinky. Well, design quarterback run. Only on a three-man rush. And John Stephen Jones, is, the wise thing is going down once you get past the first down marker. At the 46-yard line. Out the sauce that. Kept his balance and then stepped out of bounds. Used the hand to steady himself and then kept moving forward down to the 39-yard line, a gain of 15. What looked like a little bit of just maybe a quick out route, pedestrian type play. Sawstead almost makes that a huge play for this Highland Park offense. 15 yards is big enough, but if he had held that balance just a little bit better, he would have been down the sideline. From the man from 39. Jones will run again. This time picked up and driven to the turf by Brendan McDonald, senior defensive end. It is a gain of six. And do you like how John Stephen Jones was selling like he was going to throw it to yeah. Sawstead and then tucked it back in quickly? That was nice. Yeah, the, the ball fake and the way, if you're going to mirror your game after somebody, I'm just going to go back to the Baker Mayfield comment. Not, not that you and I made this observation, but defensive coordinator for Mamble, Kevin Hall made that reference. Well, he's thrown for over 400 yards, but that was a nice tuck and run there for Absolutely. John Stephen Jones. Yeah, six yards, seven yards on first down, six and a half. Take that all day. This time to Alexander, trying to turn that corner, does. First down, trying another little hurdle, went out of bounds. Allen Park with another first down, and Paxton Alexander in excess of 100 yards, he picks up 16 there. Well, look at the big guys out front. You're gonna see Matt Sewell and Thomas Schellmeyer, number 71 down there, just eating up blocks, knocking down the blue jerseys like bowling pins. Alexander did a nice job of tightrope at the sideline, picking up those yards, converting the first down. Jones. Looking to throw again. Right in the middle, the ball caught by Corwin inside the 10. Shy of another first down. That's quarterback and receiver being on the same page. As 
John Stephen Jones is rolling out to his right. Finn Corwin just stopped where he was. And how about that catch? Goes up, controls it with his left hand, secures it with the right. Comes down with the big play on first down. So it's now second down. And just a little over a yard needed for the first. Jones this time to the end zone. Soft step for the touchdown. They refuse to go away. We've seen it in the second half, Craig. Whenever you see John Stephen Jones get outside the pocket, and that was a great design route. You had three receivers out in the left side of the formation, and he knew exactly where he was going with that ball. Sawstick comes up with another huge grab. Cordray for the extra point to again pull Highland Park to within three. Forty-two. 39 Manville, 642 to go after the Jones to Sawstead touchdown. As great teams compete to be number one, nothing makes us feel more alive than witnessing that amazing we'll take moment. It back for the touchdown. And cheering as one. Still on his feet, surging for the end zone, and he scores! In Texas, we have sports everywhere. So turn the game on and join the fun. We are tied. Take your home teams wherever you go with Fox Sports Southwest and Fox Sports Go. There is no greater feeling. There is no greater history. There is no greater excitement. Experience. Thrill. Pageantry. Patriotism. Celebration. There is no greater family tradition. There is no greater dream. There is no greater race than the great American race. Celebrate the historic 60th Daytona 500. Guarantee your seats at 1-800-PIT-SHOP or Daytona500.com. It's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? You start paying college athletes pretty soon. You want to pay peewee football players? If peewee football generates a billion dollars a year, <laughs> yeah! It's way too slippery a slope. The 2017 UIL High School Football Championships are brought to you by Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. By Dairy Queen. For the burgers, baskets, blizzards, and Tex-Mex we love, it's DQ. By Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, proud official sponsor of the UIL. By Baylor Scott & White Health. Find Dr. Wright right now. Visit bswhealth.com slash doc. And by Main Event, head for fun. Main Event Entertainment. Eat, bowl, play. Manville is still leading and trying to win its first state championship. Highland Park in search of its fifth state title. The first one came back in 1945. Highland Park and Waco in a 7-7 tie in front of 45,790 of the Cotton Bowl. Dope walk for Highland Park. Froggy Williams for Waco High, 13 years later. In Port Arthur, actually 12 years in uh, 1957, Jack Collins had a 26-yard run, and then they had to wait 48 years for the Band of Brothers team, led by Matthew Stafford in 2005. And then last year, Highland Park winning the defensive struggle over Temple, 16 to seven. Of course, Randy Allen, the head coach for that 2005 and last year's state championship team. Interesting note, that 1957 Highland Park squad, it happened 60 years ago, playing Port Arthur down in Port Arthur, and team bus broke down, and players had to jump in cabs to get to the stadium. Did so, and went on to win 21-9. Brian Johnson on the return. Here goes Johnson. And down the sidelines, that's going to be Cam Scott, who takes it all the way in for the score and the touchdown. 97 yards.
Wasn't it in the first half when Cam Scott was banged up? Coach Martin told us about Cam Scott. He said he could suck the trash out of the stadium when he goes by you, and you understand why he said that. This top end speed, that long stride. University of Missouri is getting a great, great wide receiver and return man. We've already seen the longest pass play in a 5A state championship game. We just saw the longest kickoff return. Cam Scott in the state championship. And just like that, back to a 10-point man the lead. Tremendous return for Cam Scott. Oh, who they behind? Hey, we got to get on the start, too. And so now it goes back to Highland Park. Can they count? And the, and the key here also, Shay, is with every Manville score, it pushes it back to a two-score game. That's the, the problem that Highland Park is chasing. Because eventually, even if they come back score, they're going to have to get a stop. Well, the one thing, too, that you, you kind of think about a little bit is for Manville, your offense really hasn't had a lot of time to get into rhythm. You're not like a sustained drive. I mean, they're scoring so fast and so quickly that man, if you have to put a drive together, are you going to be able to do it? Right now, leading by 10, certainly Coach Kirk Martin hopes that that's not the case. This kick will go out of bounds. Island Park will start from its 30. So, we've seen the quarterbacks be on display tonight. And <laughs> look at those numbers put up. John Stephen Jones already with 43 attempts. That's a record, the 430 passing yards. But in addition well, to that, you've seen Case and Martin come right back with 412 yards and five touchdown passes. We've had the kickoff return for a score. In each of these guys, Greg, very important to note, no interceptions. With all the passing yards, with flinging the ball, throwing it all over the yard, no interceptions. Now time starting to become a factor as Highland Park is trailing by 10. And a fast back dazzle. the other way, downfield for Sawstead, and he's wrapped up, and that'll be 15 yards pass interference. And Trent Gordon has had his hands full with Cade Sawstead as have most of the defenders who have tried to play him man-to-man. -man. We'll see the 15 yards marched off. But how about the moxie here? You talked about Randy Allen emptying the tank or emptying the bag. Another little pass play. Diverti goes see, going to act like he's blocking down. He's going to break it back out to the flag. Clearly pass interference there by Gordon. Sawstead created space, got a step. That was Genevine on the pass. Now they'll go back to the ground. Alexander trying to surge through for a few yards. Yeah, tough running by Paxton Alexander. He jumped up, made a couple of guys miss, spun around, and tough three yards. So it'll be second down and seven. Did you see the time remaining? Less than half of the quarter remaining. And Manville up 10 points. On the move, downfield, pass caught, and a first down. Wow. Genevieve. Genevieve back in the game. How about that? After the injury that he suffered, did a little work on the lower leg, and that's a nifty catch there on the sideline. He's running full speed. John Stephen Jones rolling out to his right through a waist-high pass. Genevieve comes up with a grab. Ball at the 37-yard line. 5.38 to go, and once more, Highland Park chasing two scores. Alexander, and what a great play made. Slinging him down is Brendan McDonald. Loss of five. Yeah, Brendan McDonald doing a nice job of collaring Paxton Alexander. Good pursuit by the defensive end. Yeah. 
second down and 15. Jones flings it out incomplete. Sawstead takes a hard hit. Pass thrown high and incomplete. And again, that's that battle. Trent Gordon and Sawstead going at it. As yeah, Sawstead jumps up, the ball is thrown to the inside. Gordon is coming back. He's going to make a play on the ball and comes in with a big, pretty big collision there. And now third and 15. moment in this ball game. Isla Park, of course, needs to convert to keep it going. They're 9 out of 15 on third downs tonight. Jones sets up the screen. Back to Alexander. This is going to lose yardage. Again, outstanding pursuit by the Manville defense. How many times have we called DePriest Taylor's name tonight? Uh -huh. Did a great job of tracking the running back. Take another look as he closes down. It looked like it was good play design and Ben Boudreau rolling over to the right side, but the Priest Taylor locking in like a honing heat seeking missile comes down and drops back to Alexander for a loss. Fourth down, a critical moment for Isla Park. They've got to go for it on fourth and 20. Yeah, throw the post route deep. That's exactly what it's going to, to Sawstead, all the way down the sidelines, Highland Park sideline, looking for a flag, it's not there, and the football will go over on downs to Mandel. And that's been the battle tonight with Gordon. Well, you see Trent Gordon backpedaling, and John Stephen Jones gets good pass protection, gets it into the end zone, two defenders there, but the ball just passed the reach for Cade Sawstad. On a night full of big plays, you can probably guess what tonight's DQ big play of the game is. Well, Mr. Cam, Cam Scott. Scott. You know it. After the Highland Park Scots close the game to three, all the momentum on their side. Cam Scott fields the ball, gets great blocking by the special teams. That top end speed of his, so impressive. So Manville with the football and a chance to run out the clock now and hand off to Garrison Johnson sweeping around the side. Net right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play at second down, but time, the big factor here, down to four minutes to go. And Manville looking to keep it between the boundaries to keep the clock moving here. And in case of Martin going all the way to the sideline to get the play call. Take as much time as they can. And I'm sure probably head coach Kirk Martin, dad, probably told him we're running a lot of clock here. He wants him to run the clock down. They won't even break the huddle until close to 10 seconds on the play clock. Heady play by the quarterback, understanding the time and the situation. The handoff again. Scott's Scott defense continues to impress Colby Hopkins, the first to make the hit, James Herring coming up with the tackle. Island Park using the first of its three timeouts. Here and third down coming up. Obviously, Highland Park in a must-stop situation here. Of course, what a great game we've had tonight. A tremendous day, morning, afternoon, in tonight for state championship games. And coming up following the game, it's Ford Championship Live with Rick Renner, Coach Ken Purcell, Greg Tepper. We'll talk about this Manville defense making its mark tonight. East Texas supremacy from Pleasant Grove High by Texarkana and, of course, Carthage. Carthage is Carthage. Back-to-back -back state titles and a recap of what many are already referring to as Fantastic Friday. It's been a tremendous game, but what a way to top all this off tonight. And this is just one of those back and forth games, Craig, where big time players making big plays. And again, we go back, if you look at the scores of the games for Highland Park, this is very indicative of how they've gone all season long. I mean, it, it's been a you know, 10 point game, a three point game. They've always come out, excuse me, without exception of the first game of the season, they've come out on top. Right now they're trailing and desperately need to get a stop here on third down. Third and 11. 
Prince in the backfield. But Martin wants to throw. Downfield on third down. Battling for the ball, it's incomplete. It stops the clock and brings up four down. Scott was the target. Zach Foltz, the senior safety, helping to break it up. That's a break for Highland Park, not having to use a timeout here. And it brings up four down. Well, Foltz, along with Hudson Clark, both in on the play. Cam Scott, all three going up, makes a play on the ball. But as you said, Craig, incomplete. And, and more importantly for Highland Park, stoppage of the clock. Remember, Highland Park has one timeout left. They used the first one prior to going for two in the third quarter and then called the second one a moment ago. So they have one remaining. And Mamba will punt if Corwin has to signal for a fair catch. It does. The ball is chasing him back to the 18-yard line, which is Highland Park where they'll start after the 42-yard punt. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there with 3.07 to go and down two scores. Well, you brought it up, Shea, with it this tremendous day today. Afternoon action, and then this great game tonight. And maybe the best thing about the whole deal is we got three more tomorrow. <laughs> three more state yeah. championship games tomorrow starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. What a wonderful event this is. 12 championship games in just over 100 hours here at AT&T Stadium. Jones to Sawstead and out of bounds. Quick hit. Didn't pick up a lot of yardage on it, but close enough to right by the first down marker and got out of bounds. Picked up nine and second down and one. Trent Gordon giving Sawstead a little more space out there so it's not to get beat deep. Jones, gonna go deep. Looking for Sawstead, got a step on Gordon, but the ball not there. He had gotten beyond him. You see John Stephen Jones upset with himself. I love that play call. Sawstead is the wide receiver on the left-hand side. John Stephen Jones runs out to his right. Sawstead cuts across the middle, just on the diagonal, and he was open. He was behind the defender, and that's why John Stephen Jones Wants to have that pass back. If he just puts a little bit more air underneath that, Saul said, he was standing in the end zone. Now it's going to be third and a yard. Adam Burke obviously has to convert on third down, so they'll hand it off. And here's Allen on the carry. Clock will stop while they move the chains. The game five yards out to the 27. Move the chain, stopping the clock to do that. Highland Park quickly in formation here. And now the ball made ready for play. Well, Saul said took that play off. Now he's back in the game. Needs a little bit of a breather. And Jones back to the air again with pressure coming. Got to get rid of it and does. Out to Corwin, made the catch. Going to turn this into a big game. Out of bounds is Corwin. And a first down for Highland Park. Jermaine Brown ran him out of bounds and went for 26 yards. John Stephen Jones keeping the play alive with his feet and his vision downfield knowing where to go. Finn Corwin is about the third or fourth read on this play, but he does know where he is. He locates it when he can't find anyone else. Corwin turns it upfield for a big play. So the ball at the 45-yard line. And when we've seen Trent Gordon on Sawstead, now we see Sikori Tolds. Cornerback switching over. Manville has taken a timeout. Kirk Martin wanting to let his guys catch their breath here. He was out of bounds anyway, so the clock was not going to move. So that's why he went ahead and took the timeout here to try to get his guys settled down. Well, again, take, think about this now, the change. So, so Gordon has been on Cade Sawstead all game, and now they're putting Tolds to come back over. Let's see what, I don't know, they may even have Gordon back deep again, but it's they're trying to figure out a way to limit the range of where he can get to before John Stephen Jones can find him in the pass out. Well, we told you three more games tomorrow. One more triple header of 5A and 6A games beginning 11 o'clock in the morning. Number one team in the state, Alito in 5A, taking on College Station. That's the 5A Division II state championship game. 
Allen and Lake Travis. Allen number one in 6A. Lake Travis, the defending state champions of 6A Division I. That's at three. And then at seven o'clock, somebody's going to win their first state championship, either Midway High from Hewitt, just south of Waco, or Cypress Fairbanks. Cy Fair from the greater Houston area all tomorrow. Fox Sports Southwest. Fox Sports go out on first down. Jones stepping up in the pocket. Downfield and open to make the catch is Smith. And Smith will get out of bounds. That one goes for 28 yards. Paxson Alexander did an outstanding job of getting deep. When he gets deep, it allows Jay Smith to get on the underneath side of it. They completely lose him on the field, chasing down after Paxson Alexander. Smith is there, and again, John Stephen Jones at downfield vision, knowing exactly where to go with the football. At the 16-yard line now. Alan Park still has a timeout left, trying to get into the end zone quickly now. Here's Jones looking. Sawstead. Did he catch it? He's made yes, catch. he did. At the one-yard line. Yes, ball just inside the one-yard line. What a great route by Sawstead. He, this guy's 6'5", and he's nimbly navigating the boundary line. Made a great effort coming back to get his hands on the ball. He knows he wasn't going to put it in a touchdown, but he did a great job getting it down inside the one. Right there. Hit the pylon actually with it, but first and goal at the one. Jones and across for the score. Still alive with 2.06 to go. No doubt about this with John Stephen Jones, knowing that they need to get the score quickly. Gets hit by DeBreez Taylor, but actually runs through that arm tackle, gets it into the end zone. This to pull Highland Park again to within three. Forty-nine. 46 with 2.06 to go. Highland Park does have a timeout if they don't recover the onside kick. But of course, that's the directive now. Well, Sawstead making a great grab. Going down and again, excellent route. Secures the ball. And clearly, he's not in the end zone. I mean, the ball is on the other side of the pylon. His thigh knocks it over. John Stephen Jones takes care of it in short fashion. What a great pitch and catch, though, and driving your team down the field, willing your way to another touchdown. And you say, hey, is it over? Let's go. The 25,000 fans in attendance tonight have been treated to something special. An onside kick to come, and again, Highland Park down three. Remember, they went for two way back early in the third quarter after being down 21-10 at the half. Scored. Randy Allen used a timeout. They ran the two-point conversion play, got it. And so it's alternated between three and ten points. The lead for Manville since then. Well, it's at three now with 2.06 remaining. Onside kick to come. Cordray out there, and he does bounce it on the ground. That's in the air, and that's recovered by Highland Park. Guess who? Kate Sawstad. I really like the way that the Scots set up that onside kick. Looked like it was going to go to the left. They kick it to the right. Kate Sawstad, that 6-5 frame. Going up. And what a great onside kick. It got two bounces, that one and then the big one right there. The second one carried it to the 10 yard marker area and beyond and Highland Park recovered. 2.06 to go in a timeout or 2.05 left in a timeout. There's time certainly for Highland Park to get in the field goal range to tie it. There's time for them to come down to win it. Jones to the air and incomplete. Trying to go outside to Carson Bryant. Okay, we really need to talk about this offensive front for Highland Park. In the first half, you mentioned those eight sacks, a record 
in this game, and it was only at the half. Second half, John Seaman Jones has not been harassed nearly as much. Up front, those guys have done a really good job of protecting him and keeping a clean pocket. Second down and 10. Just now the game will get inside two minutes off of this play. Blitz coming for Mandel. And Jones, under pressure, sets his feet and is able to scramble. Did not get out of bounds and did not pick up the first down, I think. Depends on the spot. Cameron Pettisglo made an outstanding open field tackle to keep John Stephen Jones in the field of play. Take a look at number 13 here at the end. He wants to go out of bounds. He comes in and clips him and drops him inside. The clock is moving here down to a minute 40 to go, and it is third down in less than one. Jones to Alexander, sweeping around the corner. He did pick up the first down and got out of bounds. They had to do that. 92 seconds to go. Another look. Tough physical run by Paxson Alexander. Protecting the ball, keeping it on the outside, lower the shoulder, and took a couple of big shots there. Didn't need to get a lot of yards, but he got enough for the first down. Scott's still with a timeout remaining. Amazing numbers from John Stephen Jones. A UIL State Championship record. Looking for more. But Mando looking to come up with a big defensive play. Jones had to get rid of the ball, and he did. Well, hot pursuit was Corey Roberson at junior defensive end. He ran a long way. <laughs> you see John Stephen Jones, he patted him on the head. He Roberson said, looks a little yeah. winded. <laughs> he said, man, you're a big guy. I don't, don't, don't want you to catch up to me. And got rid of it at the last moment. JSJ looks a little winded as well. Minute 23 to go. One timeout left. And second down and 10. Jones. Firing deep over the middle. It is almost caught and then almost intercepted. A couple of guys with an opportunity. First, Carson Bryant for the Scots, then Trent Gordon on the coverage for Manville along with Cameron Pettisclo. Well, I like the idea of taking a shot here with second and 10. Going down, Gordon there on the coverage. Carson Bryant, 6'1 senior, bounces off his right arm. Well, Brian wanted a flag, didn't come. This will be the 19th third down situation tonight for Island Park. They're 11 out of 18. On third down, a flag down before they get going. And a false start apparently will cost the Scots five yards. False start, Island Park number 71. Five yard penalty remains third down. Please put the clock at 116. 116. Thomas Schellmeyer upset. He said, I didn't do anything, but there was like a little shimmy of a right thigh. Man. Now it becomes third and 15 in Highland Park, not in field goal range here. That Mandel defense trying to put together one last stand. On third down, Jones outside, incomplete, look for Sawstead, and there was Sakori Tolds to knock it away, and Highland Park's final hope comes down to a fourth and 15 with 111 to go. That's one of the first times, though, that we've seen a defender, Sakori Tolds, come in front of Sawstead. I mean, he did a great job of breaking on the ball. Very good play defensively by Tolles. Randy Allen's going to use his final timeout. He said, oh, it's the last timeout. you got to be sure. It's fourth Absolutely. down at 15. You have to convert this. Might as well use the timeout. No reason to take it with you at the end of the game if you weren't exactly sure of what you wanted to run on fourth down and 15. And Kirk Martin 
exhorting his guys. One more stop, he's telling them. One more down, one more play. That's how close they are to the state championship. One stop will do it for the Mavericks, who lead it well, by three. And fourth and 15 seems like an improbable conversion, but when you have John Stephen Jones and you have Kate Sawstead, Finn Corwin, Scully Genovine, uh, you've got some got packs in Alexander. I mean, they have all been successful, and they've all had pitches and catches over 15 yards. No problem. Now, the, obviously, we're talking about plenty of time left, a minute and 11 seconds. The, the time's not the issue. It's just getting this conversion on fourth down. And all those guys you mentioned, in some way, shape, or form, have been involved in a gadget play tonight. In yeah. some way or shape. Might we see yet another one here? See what Randy I think Allen I, has dialed up. I think I go straight vanilla and give one of my playmakers an opportunity. Well, but we'll see. Fourth down and 15. The season coming down to this play for Highland Park. And Manville can close in on the title if they can make a stop here. Sawstead lined up on the top of your screen. Fourth and 15. Jones going deep. Downfield, and it's caught, and out of bounds, a catch made by Finn Corwin at the 11-yard line. Cade Salstad cleared the area. Finn Corwin still down. He's cramping on the sideline, but he, he just kind of he ran the angle route, cut it back out to the side, and he, he didn't go flat. He got depth, which put him behind the defender, Brian Johnson, in a beautiful pass by John Stephen Jones for the first down. 28 yards on the pass to Finn Corwin, who then is hit and rolls right into the Texas Farm Bureau Insurance soft sign over there. And you see him trying, that's, you're right, that's the sign of a young man trying to run off a cramp right yep. there. With the leg and trying to exhort his teammates yep. and his fans. What a ball game. What an absolute classic. And 105 to go. So clearly the Scots are in field goal range now where they can play it. But they're thinking about winning this thing in regulation. So on first down and 10 from the 11. Jones will hand it off, and Alexander's wrapped up for a loss. Great play. Guess who? DePriest Taylor. He's made some tremendous stops tonight, and that's a loss of five yards. Well, defensively again, Paxton Alexander tries to cut it back up the middle of the field, and DePriest Taylor is right there to shut the door. Second down at 15 from the 16. You see the time remaining. Jones across the middle of Sawstead. Touchdown, Highland Park! Dustin Quinney, excuse me, Cade Sawstead running an inside route. We've not seen him in the middle of the field working anything underneath. He works it underneath, and this a big body goes up, makes a great grab. Pettisglo cannot pull him down before he gets into the end zone. An extra point to give Highland Park a four-point lead. And with 34 seconds remaining in the ball game, Highland Park has its first lead of the night. Now, several things at play here. First, Mandel has two timeouts remaining. Secondly, obviously they need a touchdown. And third, it'll be interesting to see what Randy Allen wants to do here because of what we've seen with special teams tonight for the Mavericks. An historic night. That's a historic, a historic night for John Stephen Jones. It's not over yet. 
Remember, Manville's had so many quick drives, scoring drives. Meanwhile, Case and Martin wants one more shot. And we've seen Manville do it with big plays. But again, 34 seconds to go. And the way this game has gone, I don't think anybody's ready to say it's over yet. Nope. But the Mavericks do have to get a touchdown. And that fourth and 15 play. Shorter kick, but it is returnable. And out to the 28-yard line is Ladarius Owens. Well, what a night for John Stephen Jones. Well, he started off the game being harassed mightily by this Mamble defense. But when he started to use his legs, use his eyes downfield, play after play after play, to keep his team in this game, giving him a chance. Cole Salstead coming up huge. Love the slant route, that inside route. Outstanding throw. Put it right on the money. And you see Steven Jones getting emotional about it, but there's still time here. 29 seconds to go. And Mason he, Martin's got a big arm, too. And he'll swing it out. Upfield is the Derek Prince. Prince up near midfield. As we said, there is still time. 21 seconds to play with, with Winfield, the tackle. That went for 28 yards. Really like that play call because that gets you down into the area where you need to be. If you have to throw the Hail Mary pass, at least you can get it to the end zone from here. From the 50. Martin. Over the middle, it is caught. A first down, Jalen Preston. 14 seconds. And Manville will use its second timeout here with 14 seconds remaining in the ballgame attempt just inside the 31 yard line. So this thing is still not done. We don't want to say a lot of time left, but you look at 14 ticks on the clock, Craig and two of these Manville touchdowns came within 13 seconds. Exactly, so they're certainly capable of scoring right now. Of course, last year, John Stephen Jones had all eyes on him in the 5A Division I championship game against Temple, and JSJ gave the Scots the lead in the third quarter, but it was the Highland Park defense making the difference. Temple with a fourth down near the goal line. Grandpa there, Jerry Jones excited about it, and stopping. Temple on fourth down and then late in the game, the safety added on. Scott's winning the first title in over a decade, 16 to 7. Well, they're hanging on now. Manville Mavericks back on the line of scrimmage. 14 seconds remaining. Martin going up the sideline. And that was caught out of bounds. Out of bounds by Jalen Preston. Manville fans got excited for a moment, but it was called out of bounds, and we'll get another look. It's down to eight seconds remaining. Definitely out of bounds. James Harry, great coverage there. Been in the right place. Nice grab there, but clearly out of bounds, as you said, and now eight ticks. Maybe two steps left. Martin being chased, throws for the end zone, caught, and short of the goal line. The game is over. Highland Park has won the state championship. Jalen Preston tackled at the one by James Herring. What a fitting way for James Herring to finish this game. Played from that safety position all game long and
felt all the pressure, all the big plays go by him. And on the very last play of the game, when he needed to make a stop, he made it on the one half yard line to keep Jalen Preston out of the end zone. And you see the anguish on the face of Jalen Preston. Preston, here's another look at how close this came. And look at the two quarterbacks embracing there. Incredible respect for one another. But here comes the looks at it. Look how close this is to Manville winning the state championship on the final play. Caught it inside, tried to get the push forward, tackled at the one yard line. Hudson Clark, Marshall Ballard, three defenders there for the Scots and Herring. He's the one who gets the body on body. Hudson Clark goes low, Zach Foltz in on the closeout. Big play defensively and let the celebration begin. If it's not the greatest state championship game in UIL history, and it might be, it is certainly the greatest finish down the stretch. Incredible finishes yes. to what we've seen. Let's go down to C.T. Steckler, who's down there with Randy Allen. What a, what a finish. C.T. Craig, thanks so much. Coach, you've been doing this a long time. Have you ever been a part of one like that? No, this was uh, right down the wire on both ends of the field. Two great teams fought it out to the bitter end, and uh, we made a lot of plays, and they made a lot of plays, and we came out by an inch or two or a yard to, to win it. So I'm so proud of our kids for fighting back and getting us back in the game. What can you say about the heart of John Stephen Jones? Well, he's magic. I've been saying this all along. He, he can escape. He's a leader. He competes. He finds the play, you know, the re open receivers. He makes runs when he has to. But the bottom line, he competes and he's magic. Have you ever seen a team as fast as Manville in your life? No, I haven't. I hope I never do again either. <laughs> hey, Coach, last thing. This senior class, they did something real special for you. What does this moment mean like to share with them? Well, back to back is very, very difficult to do, and uh, they did it. And uh, a lot of people didn't give them a chance to do it, but they fought back and they did it. And uh, they did it against great competition, too. You look at the road that we came through to get here and the people we beat to, to win the championship, and they were some of the best teams in the state. Coach, you are all class and you do this the right way. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Craig? Always a man of composure and under control. And if you keep your head about you and your wits about you after a game like this, you are the model of composure and class. Randy Allen's always been that. And it's it, it's an absolute classic, a thrill, an incredible game, an incredible finish. Well, in big play after big play, when it had to happen for both of these teams, Highland Park closes the gap to three. Cam Scott races down for the return. They come back now, Highland Park, they, they never gave up. They kept fighting. They converted on fourth and 15. And then Cole Solstad ran the route, that little skinny post route, Cade Solstad, excuse me, ran the route, and, and the pass was perfect. And I'll tell you what, Craig, look, this Bamble defense was, was ball hawking in the first half. Offensive line play by the Highland Park Scots got a lot better in the second half, and that gave John Stephen Jones opportunities to locate guys, look downfield, and we talked about the Nissa Classic. I, I'm kind of going back a little bit, and I know you'll remember this. Dustin Quinney to Andre Williams. 2002, against, Commerce Judson against Midland. Midland High. Hail Mary, 33-32, great game. Last play of the game, but I would certainly say, yeah, there's Coach and Son there. As heartbreaking as it is for Kirk, and Case and Martin, a, a tremendous ride for those two. And it is heartbreaking if you're on the losing end and Jalen Preston knows he was that close. One yard from it being a manful celebration for a state championship. Well, I don't think there's any doubt who the offensive MVP is going to be. That's still to be announced, but the guy we think is going to get it John Stephen Jones down on the field with C.T. Steckle. C.T. Craig, thanks so much. 564 yards, four touchdowns right here, through the air, another on the ground. But I want to talk about your heart. How did you will your team to this win? I mean, I got the best teammates in the world. They got no quit on them. Not one of them. No, they have no quit. And uh, I'm, I'm, they just inspire me every time I go out there. 
This is the way they attack each play. I got the best teammates and the best coaches in the world. That's all I can say. You guys were struggling at the line of scrimmage and point of attack in the first half. How did you neutralize them and find a way to make plays? Uh, Coach Allen came up with a great game plan in the second half. And um, I mean, it's all on Coach Allen. He, he just put us in a great position to win. You get the onside kick, you get the ball back, and you've got a chance to win. What's going through your mind? Don't quit. Win this thing. That's, how, that's all I went through my mind. Hey, final question for you. This senior class, you guys did something special. What does this mean to you to be the leader? And how convincing are you that this HB team will go down in history? Um, for me, it means to me that I formed the best brotherhood I've ever been a part of anything. I mean, I got made uh, friends with guys I had never met before. And um, we're all close, close as all get out. And uh, I wouldn't trade this thing for the world. And I'm so proud to say I'm a part of this. It is a blast to watch you play. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your teammates. Thank you so much. Greg. CT, thank you. On a night when Island Park took the field in what is affectionately and humorously sometimes referred to as Jerry World. Now, this is John Stevens' world <laughs> tonight. So John, gonna, Stevens, get, John Steven Jones claiming this as his own tonight. Are you suggesting that they change the ATT to JSJ? JSJ? Maybe, maybe for a day. AT&T Stadium becoming JSJ Stadium for a day. What a ball game. 564 passing yards. It's an all-time UIL state championship record for any classification. Greg, you can see the intensity and the emotion in his face. He left every ounce of what he has on the field. And how James about, Herring getting a big hug there from his safety who actually was a, made that last tackle that was needed to secure this state championship. James Herring, who was banged up, came back, also had a, had a, one of many Highland Park defensive backs who had uh, a challenge tonight with Manville receivers getting behind them and still at the end comes up with the play and Kirk Martin can only tell his team I'm sure how much he loves them and yep. how hard they play because this has been a wonderful ride and look at the quarterback let's pick up Case and Martin. Okay. I know we don't see it right now we can't see nothing but loss right now I love y'all so much man this is such a great team now my brothers I told y'all that man I, I don't understand it right now.